Hi folks, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, this video is going to be about vitamin C and weight loss. Um, something that I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, it's just another one of those videos that I've been, um, uh, that's been in the back of my mind. I've been thinking about doing um, a video on vitamin C and weight loss. Now, why would I do a, vit a, vit a video on vitamin C and weight loss? Um, there is some very interesting studies regarding vitamin C and its ability to regulate genes and uh, potentially cause uh, reductions in body fat. Um, they're not very well known studies, they're not promoted very well, uh, I don't see uh, much literature about them uh, and I suspect this is because vitamin C is very cheap, uh, it's not really a supplement that makes supplement companies much money so there's no real interest or incentive for uh, these studies to be to be promoted anybody can go and buy ascorbic acid powder it's virtually given away it's so cheap um, and it's a very uh, useful supplement as well as obviously the potential for losing body fat uh, it's also a very important substance because it is a vitamin we can't produce vitamin c as humans only animal or well, most animals can produce vitamin c we can't so we're reliant on dietary sources and a very very fruit Vit uh, fruit rich uh, vegetable rich vitamin c rich f diet will provide you with about 600 milligrams of vitamin c uh, a day uh, and i would suggest that's probably on the low level of what most people require in modern life due to the fact that we're under increasing stress uh, and uh, we are surrounded by pollution which uh, uses up anti both of those use up antioxidants very quickly um and the stress um, factor is very important um, as one of the things I'll talk about in this video is the relationship between vitamin C and cortisol levels. So I see a lot of people who are overweight uh, in the nice weather going out and uh, on runs and they look like they are in real pain. They're really struggling. And I don't think exercise is a very good way of losing weight. Um, I don't think running is a very good thing for people that are, uh, you know, obese or very overweight to do. It's very damaging on the joints if you're overweight. Uh, it's also very, uh, very stressful on the cardiovascular system. And um, there, are, there it, it takes a long time to recover from um, uh, putting your body under that type of stress. So I've always, um, throughout my videos, suggested that nutrition, focusing on the nutritional aspects of um, weight loss are far more important than the exercise uh, side of things. And unfortunately, most people that want to lose weight who are not, um, you know, uh, 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 who are not perhaps you know knowledgeable about these things they feel that what they need to do is put their body under undue stress by going on you know these very stressful um, exercise courses or runs uh, and I, I think it's detrimental I don't think this is why a lot of people don't manage since aren't successful in their weight loss activities so focus on the nutritional aspects it's nutrition poor usually poor nutrition that has caused people to become overweight uh, eating poor foods eating you know food uh, not having enough nutrients in the food uh, that uh, causing metabolic disruption that is what causes you to become overweight a lack of exercise is not really what causes people to become uh, overweight that's my personal opinion um so you know it's supported by all the videos that i've made with all of the um, studies that i've looked at and you know time and time again you look at studies and exercise groups don't perform well in weight loss however nutritional nutritionally focused um, groups perform very well in weight loss and that's a consistent finding in the um in in the in the in, in the in the research so focusing on the nutrition is very important um that's not to say that exercise isn't important. Exercise is very good for phys for, for, for fitness. Um, once you get to your normal body weight, going for a run, that's fine. It increases your fitness. It boosts. It, you know, it makes your cardiovascular system healthy. What I'm saying is that if you're overweight, putting your body through that type of stress is not a good idea. Um, so one of the things you can focus on is vitamin C levels. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give you some practical advice to be able to help you lose weight. Vitamin C levels. What do we know about vitamin C and weight loss? Well, firstly, there is an inverse association between total antioxidants and 
body fat. In other words, those people who have the highest levels of body fat have the lowest levels of antioxidants. The reason for that, in my opinion, is because obesity and weight gain is a symptom of a damaged metabolism that causes oxidative stress. That oxidative stress is a byproduct of the metabolic dysfunction stuff like uh, you know uh, factors like uh, insulin resistance leptin resistance cortisol resistance all of these things come together and they cause metabolic disruption that leads to inflammation and that inflammation causes um, not only is not as a cause of one of the causes of weight gain it's also a cause of the using of antioxidants at a faster rate than you would normally do so you use up all your antioxidants and then you become uh, depleted in them so one of the antioxidants that you would become depleted in is vitamin c so those people with the biggest the heaviest bodies um generally what i'm talking about is people who have more body fat they have the lowest levels generally the lowest levels of vitamin c whereas those people of normal body weight have the highest levels of vitamin c so vitamin c is associated with uh, being normal body weight now that doesn't mean that vitamin C is able to cause weight gain. It might just be a byproduct of the high levels of fat. But there are other studies that indicate that vitamin C does have a direct um, ability to cause um, weight loss in terms of body fat. Now, I'll put a link to this study in the comments box below. There is a study that shows that those people who are depleted in vitamin C, in other words, have the lowest levels of vitamin C, they burn... 30% less fat during moderate exercise compared to those people who are replete in vitamin C. So that doesn't mean that if you take excess vitamin C, you will burn more body fat. But what it does mean is if you have suboptimal levels of vitamin C, which the obese are likely to have, you are going to burn 30% less uh, body fat when you exercise at a moderate level, moderate level compared to somebody who is of uh, replete vitamin C levels. So this may be one of the reasons why exercise doesn't actually cause weight loss in, in the obese because they're burning 30% less body fat to start with compared to somebody who's normal body weight. So supplementing vitamin C, taking a diet that's high in vitamin C to make sure your vitamin C levels are replete is going to make sure that you're in that a proportion of people who optimize their fat burning during moderate exercise so that's the first study and the first thing to take into account now that's really quite an amazing study when you think about it if you have any deficiency in vitamin c and studies have shown that large proportions of, of western of the western population is depleted in vitamin c particularly at certain times of the year um, those people are going to burn 30 percent less body fat under conditions of moderate exercise so brisk walking um, you know light jogging cycling those types of exercises uh, if they're the things that you're doing to lose weight and you haven't got enough vitamin c you're going to be burning 30 percent less body fat to start with so that's the first study that will be in the, the comments box below this uh, video the next study is an animal study uh, now it has to be taken in context because animals can actually produce their most animals can produce their own vitamin c they synthesize gram amounts of vitamin c humans don't do that so again this there might be uh, you know differences between humans and animals in terms of how this works but studies have looked at vitamin c supplements uh, and supplementation of animals with vitamin c in the diet and those animals that are supplemented with vitamin c have um decreases in their subcutaneous fat which is the fat we have under our skin and their intra-abdominal fat which is the fat we have around our internal organs so the beer the beer gut kind of fat is the is the abdominal fat and the fat we have under our skin over our entire body uh, which is generally there to keep us warm um, it, 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 both of those compartments uh, decrease in size when animals are supplemented with vitamin c so that's going to be the second paper the second study that i put in the comments box below this video you can have a look at this and as always this is only my opinion so do your own research have a look at the studies you might not agree with my opinion or my interpretation of them that's how science works um you know these are these are my my opinions based on the studies that i've looked at uh, people will always disagree uh, and that's obviously how healthy debate uh, occurs but that's my opinion and um, these are the studies that i'm using so you may have your own you may want to ask a question about them so you can have a read of them they'll be down there so that's you know that's quite interesting and the authors of that paper 
um, suggested that there were two mechanisms by which vitamin C may help animals lose body fat from their subcutaneous and intra-abdominal fat um, compartments. And they said that the, the, it was likely that vitamin C was acting as a gene regulatory um, uh, gene regulatory nutrient so it would affect the genes in particular ways and two of the two of the uh, of the genetic mechanisms that it, it affected were lipogenesis which is the production and synthesis of lipids and steroidogenesis which is the synthesis of steroid hormones um, and that's the mechanism by which they suggested that these uh, the vitamin c was able to um, affect um, the, the, the fat loss of animals now that's related to the next study that i want to talk about which is the effect that um vitamin c has on cortisol levels in humans now steroidogenesis in particular um the um the pathway that the um, paper on animals suggested that um, steroidogenesis was affected was in the production of the stress hormone cortisol um, now cortisol is a steroid hormone it's um, the main stress hormone that uh, it's released in humans it is also released in animals but it's only a secondary stress hormone corticosterone is is, is the main stress hormone in animals but we release cortisol it's um, produced in a very similar way to how animals produce it it's under its steroid hormone the same it has basically the same effect um and there has been a study on ultra ultra marathon runners uh they're people that do um lot, multiple marathons uh they run and put their bodies under massive stress by running many many miles um giving them high levels of vitamin c supplements before during and after their ultra marathon uh, and the, they they were given either 500 or 1500 milligrams of vitamin c significantly lowered their cortisol levels um, so that fits in with the study on animals to show that vitamin c is a gene regulatory nutrient that is affecting steroidogenesis so it might be that one of the mechanisms is that vitamin c is lowering cortisol levels now how does that fit in with weight loss and obesity well there are associations between stress and obesity generally those people who are under the most stress tend to have the highest uh, body weights so there is a there is a theory that term stro uh, obesity is caused by stress it's one of the mechanisms that can trigger and cause the uh, generate uh, the, the development of obesity another association is that those people under the 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 highest amounts of stress in their daily lives tend to eat more carbohydrate food and carbohydrate food that they tend to eat is the comforting food that would generally cause weight gain so there is an association there between stress and weight gain uh, and anybody that's been under a lot of stress will probably agree with this when you see people that are under stress as long as the stress is not ultra extreme and, and it's chronic and it goes on for a long time those people do tend to put on the, uh, weight um uh, and this may be related to the diet it may be related to the way cortisol works but there is that association but the vitamin c does appear to lower stress hormone levels um so that fits in with the fact that it's regulating steroidogenesis it may also be regulating lipo lipogenesis which is the production of new lipids and if that's the case it may well be decreasing the storage of fat or the production of new fat from carbohydrate for example uh, and that might have um, a weight loss effect because it's altering the compartmentalization of the nutrients that we that we have um, in it you know in terms of stores so there is not a clear picture i'm not saying there's a study that says that people who take vitamin c lose weight but there is a reasonable amount of evidence in the scientific literature that optimizing your vitamin c so that you have high levels of vitamin c relative to the general population you need to be in the top few percent of, of people in the population in order to be able to maximize your weight loss effects certainly from the from the first study the, the study on fat oxidation if you have a vitamin c deficiency you are causing your uh, body to have significant problems with the metabolizing of fat uh, particularly lipids during exercise uh, and this again relates to the fact that vitamin c may be regulating lipogenesis it may be having this regulatory effect on the ability of the body to utilize um, fats so what's the take-home message vitamin c is very important um, you can't really get enough vitamin c in your diet you won't get a vitamin c deficiency from eating a very high quality diet i'm not saying that but we live in conditions of very high pollution we live in conditions of um very um 
um, you know, very um, stressful conditions in life generally. And 600 milligrams of vitamin C is not a great amount of vitamin C when you look at the studies and how much they supplement. So what you need to do is make sure that you're at the top end of the vitamin C uh, levels that you need, which is, I would suggest, somewhere above 1500 milligrams to 2000 milligrams. And to be able to do that, you need to take supplements uh, as well as a high quality diet. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get some vitamin C from your diet. If you can get um, 600 milligrams from your diet, brilliant. Um, get the rest from supplements and then hopefully you will um, be replete of vitamin C and you should increase your chances uh, of uh, of obtaining your weight loss uh, goals and remember vitamin c is one nutrient i've talked about so many different nutrients in terms of weight loss you put all these together you can see how nutrition has such a strong effect on your overall weight loss goals if you just think about that one study if you've not got enough vitamin c in your tissues um, if you're depleted in vitamin c you burn 30 percent less um fat during moderate exercise compared to somebody who's replete that in itself is you know a very groundbreaking study and very interesting it's one that really needs to be followed up to see what the mechanisms are see how this is uh, you know relating to weight gain so the studies uh, all of the links to the studies will be in the comments box below this video if you have any questions please um you know leave a leave a comment um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, as always, eat well, stay healthy and protect yourself. And I will see you soon for another video. Take care.